Okay, we're going to review ANOVA theory. So, what is uh, an ANOVA? An ANOVA is an analysis of variance. And I uh, refer to uh, ANOVA often as, a, as an F test. And uh, we use it to, when we are looking at differences between two or more groups. Now remember, when we were just looking at two and only two groups, we did an independent t-test. Well, an F-test works with two groups, but it also works with when you have more than two, three, four, five, or more groups. So um, there is a mathematical relationship between a T-test and an F-test. So when you have two and only two groups, if you take the T-observed value and you would square it, you get the F-value. So with two groups, T squared equals F. In other words, you can run an ANOVA or you can run an independent T-test. It doesn't matter. However, when you have more than two groups, you can't run independent t-test unless you were to do more than one. Uh, if you want to uh, run a, uh, more than one uh, independent t-test, if you have more than two groups, you can do that. But why would that be a bad thing? Well, remember, when you run more tests, you accumulate more error. So Take, for example, a researcher who wishes to use a, a self-efficacy measure on students in a, in a math class. So researchers uh, might think that maybe higher levels of self-efficacy are related to better performance. So students are randomly placed into four groups. Group one receives a lecture on enhancing self-efficacy, and group two receives a lecture in an experiential exercise. And then uh, group three receives an experiential uh, exercise only, and group four uh, is a control group. They got nothing. So uh, we administer the self-efficacy measure uh, to these four different classes. Now, if I were to do t-tests and you know use an alpha level of 0.05 for each t-test, I'd end up doing six separate t-tests because I'd have to compare group one to group two, group one to group three, group one to group four, group two to group three, group two to group four, and group three to group four. Uh, Kind of the shortcut for that is to take the number of groups, uh, multiply it by the number of groups minus 1, and divide by 2. So if I have 4 groups, 4 minus 1 is 3, so 4 times 3 is 12, divide by 2 is 6. I have 6 comparisons, which is what you see up here. Um, you see, you see uh, 6 possible t-tests. So what happens if I run 6 t-tests each at uh, the 0.05 level of significance? we well, end up with uh, a 30% chance of making a type 1 error, a 30% chance of finding a, stati a statistically significant effect when one doesn't actually exist. Because each alpha level at 0.05 multiplies for each of the tests, so you know, 6 tests times 0.05 is 30% chance of type 1 error. So instead of conducting several t-tests and accumulating all this type 1 error, I'd like to keep my alpha level at 0.05 and just have a 5% chance of, taking, uh, of making a type 1 error. So I can run a single test called an ANOVA. That's why I would use an ANOVA as opposed to multiple t-tests. So there's some differences in the way uh, an ANOVA is calculated and the way a t-test is calculated. Uh, but there's also uh, some similarities. So uh, one difference is, is that when we do an F-test, uh, we're going to use squared deviations. Everything is going to be squared. I'll show you that later. Uh, remember uh, in, in the T-test, the numerator was calculated by subtracting one group mean from another. So in, in the numerator, you had mean 1 minus mean 2. So because one mean could be higher than the other mean, um, you could have a positive t-test or a negative t-test. Um, in an f-test, it's always going to be positive. You're never going to have a negative uh, f-value. Uh, you'll always have a positive f-value. So your curve doesn't look like a normal curve. It looks a little different. And you can see where the alpha level at 0.05 is at. And so this is kind of the picture of uh, what an f-curve looks like. So... All the tests that we do uh, in this class share some common properties. Um, one uh, interesting thing is that um, each test statistic can be computed from a fraction. The numerator, 
the top part of the fraction, always represents a computation um, related to mean differences, like when you're comparing two groups. Remember in the t-test, you just subtracted one mean from another mean. The denominator is always an error term. It's computed by looking at within group differences. Remember that when you have a mean, not everybody scores the mean in a group. Uh, a group can uh, uh, vary, and so we need to account for that variance. And so that's error. And so the denominator is always something about error. So we can always illustrate uh, these tests by looking at mean differences divided by error, or between group differences divided by within group differences. And then I show you a statistical formula as well. So why does this computation work? Well, simply put, uh, the numerator always expresses differences between groups. In the formula I just showed you, we could, sh we could hypothesize that an experimental group had a higher performance than a population group. And so we, uh, the mean score from the population group could be subtracted from the mean score of a, uh, an experimental group. But keep in mind that the mean score in either group is simply a representative score. And each participant in either group may have scored above the mean or below the mean. So consider the following values, 20, 18, 21, 18, 23, and 20. If you were to calculate the mean uh, for those six values, you'd get uh, a mean of 20. Some participants scored at the mean. Some scored above it and some scored below it. So in order to account for that variability, we calculate an error term. In this case, a standard deviation of approximately 1.9, which represents the average amount of error from the mean. So while the mean is a score that represents a group outcome, the standard deviation mm -hmm. is an error term, signifying that some participants did not score at the mean. So kind of take that idea and move it to the concept of a test statistic, which is computed by taking into account a score that represents the average divided by a score that represents error. That's just what we're doing. So we're going to be taking a look soon uh, at how we compute in ANOVA. And keep in mind these common uh, properties statistical tests share. Essentially, an ANOVA is going to be calculated by dividing mean differences squared by error variance. And remember, variance is the squared value of the standard deviation. So we're talking about squared values here. All right. The numerator will be mean differences and the denominator will be error variance. Okay. So that concludes our ANOVA theory. And uh, next, we'll move on to uh, calculating uh, a one-way ANOVA.